Uh, how are you doing? Are you, are you I think done? it'd be good to talk one more, th if there's one more thing you want to talk about, I think I could talk about one more thing if you've got a pressing need. Uh, I think the repulsion, I'm going to forget about it or I'm not going to want to talk about it as much next week. So if you're willing to do that as our last bit. Huh? Yeah. Okay, so repulsion um, is, uh, I think, Polanski's second film after Knife in the Water. I, I forget mm -hmm. the name of it, but... Um, and so it is a Roman Polanski film. We're going to spoil the movie. Um, mm -hmm. but, and Roman Polanski is a bad person. Um, I don't... We're <laughs> being incredibly reductionist, but he has... <laughs> yes, well, he, he raped at least one person. It is well known, and he never went to jail for it because he, this was a woman, in, a, a young girl in the U.S. in the late 70s? I forget what year. Um, and he never came back to the U.S. and then made movies abroad in Europe. And in fact, we even recently made a movie and then got lauded for it. And everybody, a lot of people were like, what are we doing? Uh, and there's yeah. a lot of, there have been many other accusations, though, as far as I can tell, there is not as much conclusive proof that he mm -hmm. did something wrong, though, as far as I can tell, no bueno. But, and specifically, I wanted to mention that not just because it's always good to acknowledge these things and to be, you know, cover the spectrum when, discussing problematic films or films by problematic people, but especially because this is, Repulsion is a film about a woman who is, works at a spa and ha lives with her sister and seems to have issues at the beginning of the movie. We're not really sure. She's a little uh, laconic and, and kind of lazy, but not the kind of lazy where it's like, oh, she's a lazy person. More like she has issues having energy and doing things and she seems a little potentially disturbed, not necessarily in like a major way, just like not having, she's having issues. And then her sister goes away with, her, her sister goes away with her, her boyfriend. And so our main character is just in the apartment by herself. And she slowly devolves from there. And it is a movie that is so concerned with the female, with female issues. Now it doesn't, it looks like a film made by a man, but not necessarily in like an icky way. It doesn't look like Revenge where it's like, like we watched Revenge a couple of years ago and it's this great movie and it's sort of, it has to do with how we look at the female body and how we treat women and body blah. It's not quite that, but it is a movie really concerned with the, the, the female condition, being a woman it, yeah. in a certain era. And it's like, how does Roman Polanski, <laughs> who wakes because, a woman later, like what? Because people are complicated. Also, yes. he lived through the Holocaust. Also, his wife got murdered. I mean, I'm not, I'm work. not, nothing, nothing excuses his own behavior, but no, it's a very complicated, like, there's nothing complicated about he raped someone, but, no. but as, as a whole picture, his whole picture is complicated. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's weirdly, weirdly, I mean, the movie is interesting anyways, but it weirdly makes the movie more fascinating that he, he is now known for these bad things he did. Right. And, and I will say the movie she is pretty uncomplicated a victim. Like, she doesn't have much agency. I don't know. I just started thinking as we were talking about, she's not diagnosed in this film. There's, you know, it doesn't, at least it doesn't have the obnoxious, like, psycho type of, like... Oh, yeah, it's... Type yeah. of thing. Um, and I was thinking about David and Lisa and one of the, which is about... Um, a cup, which is, I'm not sure, it made sometime similar. I'll look, I'll look these dates up. But it, it, one of the things that I thought was very powerful about David and Lisa that has aged very well, despite it being 30, 40, 50, whatever years old, is um, that there's the people who are mentally ill have agency. So and David I, and Lisa is 1962. Okay. And when is, um, I bet Repulsion's earlier. I think Repulsion is uh, 1965. Oh. Yeah, it's a little Yeah, so later. I would say as far as a, a picture of of a, a mental illness, like David and Lisa is better, you see. Whereas she is, she has... In Repulsion. She's, in Repulsion, she is reactive. I wouldn't say she has much agency at all. Well, she certainly, I mean, there's the question, you know, always of how much agency does our, do our female characters have in movies? Mm -hmm. And in the 60s, you know, there are, I mean, better, probably better than the 30s, but, mm -hmm. and she doesn't seem to have a lot of ability to do anything anyways, but she also has, 
this sort of internal issue with agency where she isn't doing things because of her own issues. So there's no agency because of this is her society, but also because of her own internal workings. Right, which is where you and I, I know you, you have more of an issue with when someone is genuinely suffering from mental illness in a movie versus kind of women being driven crazy. Because often the women being driven crazy films, they don't have a lot of agency, but that is inherently the issue. They are, yeah. it's kind of an exist, it's the existentialist female issue where feminine issue where you're, you're, you're feeling like nothing you do really matters or changes things. And so therefore you don't have any agency. Where in, in Repulsion, it's more like she might ha be having serious breaks with reality. It's hard to tell, but at the same time, the movie is trying to show that like no one is helping her. The men are all interested in her because she is a beautiful blonde French woman, and yeah. to them, she is just an object. So it's 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 a weird film where you're you're kind of in her head, but well, it's trying to see things from the outside. Well, so if uh, we should mention the lead is played by Catherine Deneuve. I'm not yeah. trying to say her last name. I, I don't really know her very much, but she's famous. <laughs> yeah, I think I've seen her in something else. I can't recall it at the moment. And it's interesting because she, so her character, had, there's this guy who likes her, her character. She has, it's not her boyfriend, but it's a man who's interested in her. And C cousin hooked them up or something weird. Yeah. yeah. And he, he at first seems like he might genuinely care about her and then he breaks into her apartment because he's concerned about her and she's not answering and blah blah and this is you know later in the movie and she and at first you're like oh is he about to help her and it's like oh no he like starts talking to her like I have these things and I want you and did it and it's all it's about, all about him. him yeah and it's like oh so he's he's you know weirdly I've been watching some video essays about how like nerds for a certain while were portrayed almost as being the heroes in some in certain kinds of movies and there wasn't this sort of critical eye with like oh nerds are not you know brutish necessarily and are not the violent types that are in movies but they have their own sort of basket of issues i mean i'm being general and reductive here right but it's almost like he's that character and so and then she murders him because that's what she does in, in, in repulsion. repulsion in repulsion yeah. <laughs> um and to me, the movie is almost more specifically about how terrible men are in some ways in like a, it is, it actually, like the movie is symbolic, right? Like she, she is a symbol for women and these men are symbols for the different systematic types of ways men handle women. You know, it's that, that's kind of, I think what the movie's going, what, what the movie's going for. And in something like uh, uh, The Ground Beneath My Feet, huh? There is maybe a little bit of a question of, uh, you, you asked me about this. Um, there's a question in the ground beneath my feet of like whether it's mental illness or not. Well, there that's, is mental that's, illness in, that's the recent German film. It's a much recent, more recent. Yeah, this recent German. German film we saw last year. It's pretty good, you should see it. Uh, yeah, that's just the audience, not to Sarah, who saw it with me. Uh, and it's, there, is a, there is an issue of mental illness in it, or not an issue, a theme of mental illness, a, 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 an exploration of that. But I think that movie is still, the main theme is more concerned with how she fits into the society. True. Which is why I don't think that it's as much about that, or at least, I mean, again, that's why theme one, theme two. And so, whereas Repulsion, it feels like mental illness is like almost the top part, but it's like mental illness and how it is almost created by men. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's an interesting sort of like thing about that. Eh? Well, and one thing I'm thinking about, and I don't want to try and guess at Polanski's psychology too much, but going back to the things that, that happened to him, um, and I do believe this is prior to Sharon, this must be prior to Sharon Tate's murder. Yeah, but that was late like 70s. If you look at, you know, surviving Holocaust, that's, that's a, very, a situation where many, many people were victimized. And so yeah. he, he may, he may, have been at the time been seeing things in terms of victims and oppressors and and people not having agency that just may be how he views it um but as a woman it's not necessarily fun to see someone 
or just as an audience member, you don't have to be a woman to feel that way. But I, I, I don't, I don't know that that makes it invalid either. Like there are serious mental illnesses where without outside help, you may not have any agency. Um, but it is odd that it's kind of writing that line between is this being caused by outside forces? What really happened to her? Was she victimized in the way she, she, was rem she seems to be remembering? It's a little hard when you don't know what the reality of a film is. Right, and there's a, there's a question, the things she keeps seeing, there's the effects of the walls cracking are really neat. Like that just yeah. was, it came out of nowhere to me and it's like, oh, that was just really fucking cool. Uh, and, but she keeps seeing this guy who's abusing her and there's the question of, did this happen? Raping, I mean, he's raping her. In the, he's raping in her the... and like, you know, did that happen, did it not, whatever. And so there is that question of how much of it comes from that. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, it's like the the mere sight of men like disgusts her. Like she, there's this one point where she's having a conversation with her coworker, who in like a couple of scenes before was like crime because she's like had these issues with her boyfriend. But in this new scene, they're talking and having a good time. And then her coworker mentions her boyfriend, and our main character just shuts down. Yeah, it's like nope, I'm done with this conversation. Yeah. And so it's 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 so specific in that way. Yeah. Uh, real quick, uh, Polanski became a fugitive in 1978. <laughs> Uh, just for reference, and this is 1965, and for those curious, uh, uh, um, Chinatown is 1974, and then The Tenant is 1976, but Chinatown is more famous. So he kind of made and, that film, and then a few years later became a fugitive. And uh, when Sharon Tate was murdered in 69. Yeah. Okay. And so, and I don't know his filmography that well. I've seen Frantic, I've seen... Um, the Pianist, uh, and I've seen the Ghost Rider, I believe, and those three movies are concerned with men as our main characters, mainly. I mean, in Frantic, there's a woman character as well, so mm -hmm. it's not just about men, but, and put The Pianist, I, again, I haven't seen all of Clancy's work or anything, but The Pianist is my, is, is a movie that I think is really, really good. I need to rewatch it to make sure I still feel that way, but it, I wonder if there is a change of focus because of how he's portrayed and how he has to deal with things to focusing on men as his main characters. Yeah. You know, in his later Who career. Who knows? Who knows? But that's also a part of why it was a little like interesting to see a female, a woman as his main character because all the other movies I'd seen of Polanski's were men. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, and Chinatown is still more concerned with a man than with a woman. Anyways. Yeah, her victimization is really kind of, um, it's almost like setting, it's a little more than that, but it's, it's... It's more than that, but it's not, it's still not like as deep yeah. as it would be. Um, well, and that's part of, I'm not a huge fan of Chinatown. I get why people like it. I'm not that obtuse, but... Yeah, I, I, I think it's kind of a masterpiece of a movie, but it's, I mean, I, masterpiece, I use that loosely because there's still issues with it, but like it is yeah. really well made, but... Yeah, so it, it's in, Repulsion was a weird one for me to try and like make sense of those two things, you know, yeah. Lansky as director and then film as subject. I mean, one of the things I like about it has almost nothing to do with most of that in that I just like women going crazy movies. And I also like horror that does not involve monsters or things you can shoot, which is part of why I like, I like psychological horror. But psychological horror can be done really badly and it can be like, I can't remember a thing. And then... They yeah. remember the thing, and it's like, well, if that is the, you know, it's not very satisfying. So when it's like, you know, where, where they'd switch to the room just looking completely different to her, and the walls cracking, and like preoccupations with the, and as someone with anxiety, I understand kind of getting caught up by little details, and how that can kind of, I mean, in a way, yeah. that makes me think about Under the Silver Lake, where you start to put together things that may not be real. Right. Well, and they're in, in, um, uh, the, I, it's interesting that I think they had two different sets in repulsion for that living room. Yeah, it's, they must have. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're certainly using different lenses. Like normally yeah. it's kind of just a regular, I don't know what kind of lens would be a medium size, a medium shot lens or a, a medium focal lens. I'm not sure. But then they seem to have a wide angle lens for when she looks at the living room. room and it different. becomes like empty and huge. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. And then the main characters, uh, and, then, and then the men who come into her, the apartment to talk to her, it's interesting in that 
they just sort of speak at her and do some things in her apartment and don't like wait for her or have mm-hmm. anything to do with her. Like they're almost speaking at her, which yeah. is another part of like how the horror is kind of like, she has no voice. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, anyways, that's probably it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm good. I think that's, I think if we talk about anything else, I will have nothing insightful to say anymore. Yes. I will save the things that I have noted for next week's uh, or later discussions we have or whatever. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed us going to... Or listening or... Is this or listening. Only- it, watching or listening because I forget that I, I release it as a video and as a podcast. Um, stay safe. Be good. Uh, um, do things. I don't know what I'm saying. Bye. Bye. Bye.